A local man is seeking stories from the relatives of wartime conscientious objectors. Sociology researcher Martin Tolich is hoping to collate, collate information and organise a gathering around the controversial subject. And he joins us to talk about it. Good evening. Good evening. What is a conscientious objector? Well, to me, there are three types. There's the, there's the visible ones, the invisible ones, and the misdiagnosed ones. And of course, we, we know that the visible ones are the 273 men who were incarcerated in the First World War, 800 in the Second, Second World War. But those are the visible ones. But I, I'm really interested in, in gathering stories from the, the families, the, the, the families of the ones who, uh, who um, ex were left at home and, uh, and local communities sort of uh, uh, were quite intolerant towards them. They couldn't, often there were boycotts, um, uh, that, they, that they couldn't buy meat, they couldn't buy vegetables, their, school, their children at school were, uh, were harassed and, and uh, bullied. So I, I want to collect those stories. But I'm also, I'm also collecting stories on the misdiagnosed. These are people, these are men who enlisted uh, in the First World War, but because of health reasons were, weren't allowed to go. And they were, there was one, one man I know who, who was assigned to the Wanganui um, hospital laundry, which was a healthy place for him to, to, to be during the war, but uh, he was given, often given white feathers. So he was actually treated as if he was a coward. And so it's really this, I'm really interested in the, the, the stories of the invisible and the, uh, mainly the invisible, the, the, the families mm. of, and, and, and collecting their stories. How are you researching it? Well, I'm, I'm a sociologist, uh, so I'm, I'm really interested in studying power relationships, especially of vulnerable groups, and uh, these people are vulnerable. But I'm also interested in the resilience. And although this was 100 years ago, that these stories live in, in, in families. I know of, a, of a, 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 a 21st recently where, where people, the whole family got together, but people divided along the lines of, of their family supported the Conchies and, and, the, and the other ones. So this, these stories are alive and, and, and well. So how I'm researching it is, is asking people to contact me to tell me their stories. But I'm a sociologist and an ethicist at the same time. So there's an ethical story here because we're actually studying people's social DNA it's if you were to tell me that your story, if you were to share your story, I, I would uh, I, I would take your, your story, uh, I would listen to your story, uh, and transcribe it and give it back to you and say go and talk to your family and make sure that your whānau is actually happy with with you shelling, uh, telling your whole family's mm. story. Mm. What sort of input have you had from the public so far? Oh uh, well, that, that's how I've I've learned about these misdiagnosed ones that they that they turn up. Uh, it's, it's, as I talk to people, uh, students, uh, they want to tell their story, but I, ke I, keep asking, I keep asking them, you need to go back to the family and to talk to your grandmother and grandfather. Are, are they happy about you sharing their story? Mm. So I am getting a lot of stories, but I, I need to gather more, uh, 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 more stories and, and more experience. And, and so I, I, I want to write a book and I want to write a, I want to write the ethics of, of, of what I'm actually doing here. The project is, is approved by the University of Otago Ethics Committee, but I also want to, want, want to stage an event. Mm. Are people still weary to talk about it? They should be. <laughs> they should be weary about it because uh, they, need to, they need to get their family's permission that, 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 there are, that, that they can actually share their social DNA. There are some stories uh, I know of uh, where there's these rich journals of, of, of this intolerance, how these people dealt with this intolerance, but at the top of it, to be shared only within the family. Uh, so, you know, the, the mm. people, people are wary, and, and they should be. And you're planning on holding a gathering in the city to discuss it? Yes, I, I, I have. Uh, I, I, I've, I've booked a very small hall and the town hall for October 2017. And I, I, want to, I want people to, some people have called it a truth and reconciliation gathering where people come along and, and, and actually tell their story of tremendous bravery of those people in their family who stood up for conscience. And I, I think uh, these, th these issues are, um, uh, may have happened 100 years ago, but they are uh, 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 issues of today. Mm. Will you be publishing their stories? I will, I will be um, 
well, one of the things that I will be doing is c creating an archive uh, in the Hocken, and mm. and that they may say to me, you, you can put my sto that my family's story in there, but it's embargoed for five or ten or fifteen years. Mm. So, it's really it's it, it's their story. It's really not what I'm publishing. It's it's what they're share the, the, what what people are, are willing to share. Oh, well, all the best with your study, sociology researcher Martin Toch. Thank you very much for your time. You're